said, today is Satan's high holy day. I know Karen called me up and said her mama wasn't going to let her come to church tonight because of all the evil spirits in around. I said, well, there's a Holy Spirit in church. I said, you ain't got to worry about it when you come. I'd rather be here than any place else in this world tonight. I tell you what, my God's able. So uh, I've got two messages I've worked on all day today, and I don't know which one to preach yet, so I'm going to mind the Lord. You know, uh, this couple that's visiting tonight, they're out of Brother Danny's church, and they j- they just missed him, so uh, anyhow, so praise the Lord. He did a fantastic job for us again. Yes, of course, did. he always does, but I'll tell you what, you can be proud of your pastor. I'll tell you, he does an excellent job, and uh, we've been friends for a long time now, but anyhow, God, you know, God brought us together, Amen. and uh I never will forget when we were moving up to uh, North Carolina to start that church up there in Old Fort. I uh, we went up there just to kind of survey the place, and I said we got to find a church, you know, to go to Sunday. It was Saturday, I think, when we got up there, and my wife started looking through the phone book, and she found one church, and I called it and talked to the pastor, and I said, well, more than likely I'll be there, and then she said, well, here's another church, and I said, who's the pastor? And said, Danny Castle. And I said. I've been listening to him on tape for years. I hadn't even never met him though, but this was back in 19, what, 91, I guess it was, uh, 90 or 91, right in there. And uh, But anyhow, so we, we struck up a friendship and uh, uh, he's been a real, real good brother to me. I tell you what, he's been a real, uh, been a blessing. And uh, I appreciate, I appreciate their church. You know, we're the only church that he comes to that he's out of his church on a Sunday. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, he said, I get some slack for it too. I said, well, that'll be good for them, man. They'll appreciate you more when you get back. So anyhow, <laughs> take your Bibles, if you would, and turn on over to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4. I reckon this is what the Lord wants me to do here tonight. Proverbs chapter 4, and I just want to read one verse, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. It says, But the part or the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to praise and thank you tonight for the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for that opportunity, Lord, we have just to come to worship you here one more time. And Lord, God, this might be the day. It might be the hour, Lord, that we hear that shout and you call us home. And God, I just pray that, Lord, you'd burden our hearts to be ever vigilant and be busy about your work and your service down here while we got time. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, God, you might help us, Lord, to just to be a witness and a light in this old dark world for you. But, Lord, I pray that, God, you might come down here tonight and meet with us. I pray that anointing might fall down upon this message, upon your messenger. And, Lord, just... Give us a touch from heaven here tonight, and we ask this now in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And if I don't get this hooked up, my sound guy's going to go nuts back there. That is, the brother Danny didn't break it. That's all right. Yeah, there you go. He likes it loud. I, I, don't, uh, I don't like it loud because when I start preaching, I get loud. So, uh, but anyhow, that's all right. But you start thinking about the, the path of the just is as the shining light. Our path in this world is a light to a dark world. People ought to be able to see the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ in us. And it says that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Now, as, as, as a stepping stone there, turn back over a couple books to the book of Job with me. Job chapter 1, Job chapter 1, and in verse 1, the Bible says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Now, 
I want to take a look at this man Job tonight. And as we think about that light of the glorious gospel and how we are to shine in a dark and dreary world, just think about the world that Job was in. I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty bad. But, you know, Job, first of all, the Bible says that he had a perfect heart. Now, it says that man was perfect and upright in Job chapter 1 and verse 1. Perfection here is basically relative. None are absolutely perfect but Christ. That's the only perfect one there is. Now, Job was perfect in heart as David was perfect in heart. We see over in 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 4, it said, For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Ladies, you need to be real careful. Now I'm serious here. You need to be real careful. You need to keep your heart after the heart of God because you don't know how much effect you have on your husband. Now, Job was perfect in heart, but Solomon, when he was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Now, you got to remember now, he had a couple of wives, didn't he? What was it, 300? And 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's a thousand. You know, somebody said that he's the wisest man in the world at that time. Some t I wonder about that. I really do. I don't know about you, but I have a hard time with one. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't you ladies throw nothing at me now. I love you. But, but, uh, it's, yeah, praise the Lord. It came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart away from, after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Now, the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. Now, that, that's amazing to me because you start thinking about David. He was an adulterer and he was a murderer. They don't look like that would be something that God would be real pleased and I know he wasn't pleased in it but I'll tell you what you start thinking about how David's heart was and I start I, I get convicted when I see stuff like this and I start reading stuff like this because my heart I know is not where it ought to be and I can almost guarantee you there's nobody sitting here where our heart is really a hundred percent where it ought to be we need to strive to have that perfect heart. A heart fixed on the will of God. God, whatever you want me to do, that's what I'll do. And you know, over in Psalms chapter 57 and verse 7, it says, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. David's heart was fixed on the Lord. He wasn't going this way. He wasn't going that way. It's just like Paul said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. So we got a heart. We need a perfect heart. The same way old David had that heart fixed on God. Job also had a personal honor. The Bible tells us in Job chapter 2 and verse 3, it says, There is none like him in the earth. That's the Lord talking to the devil Say, if you consider my servant Job, there's none like him in the earth. God himself commended Job. Can you imagine? Boy, I tell you what, when we get to heaven, I'm, that's what I want to hear. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Every one of us ought to be striving for that. If you're, if you're doing anything else other than striving to please God, you're not in the will of God because that's God's will, I believe, for us. He honors those that honor him. Over in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not 
uh, arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. He knows every thought and intent of our heart. So He's the one that weighs our actions. You know, a lot of people, you know, you start thinking about how, why and how they do stuff for the Lord. If you don't do it out of the abundance of your heart, you're doing it for the wrong reason because you love God. That's what you ought to be doing things for Him. I know it, uh, it's hard sometimes, you know, that's like Brother Rod out there on that bus route. I know it gets lonely out there sometimes. It gets hot, at least it used to before we got an air-conditioned bus. But anyhow... I used to, when I was, when I was doing it, you didn't even, I never even heard of an air-conditioned bus before when I was in a bus ministry. And I'd go out there a lot of times on Saturday all by myself, and I'd knock on doors, and it'd be in the summertime, and man, I'd come back, and I'd just be ringing wet, and you go up there to some of these houses, and these little kids, will, they'll see you, and they'll, they'll start running, Brother Rohan, Brother Rohan, like that, come up there and just grab, and they've been playing in the dirt and the mud, and I mean... Oh, Lord, I tell you what, I grab them, pick them up, and hug them, and man, I tell you, we had us a time. God knows your heart, why you do things. We need not only a personal honor, but we need a practical holiness about us. The Bible tells us over in Job chapter 2, verse 3, he said this, talking about Job, he says, he's a man that escheweth evil. Now, Job was called an upright man there in Job chapter 2, verse 3, by the Lord. He was an upright man. We are to follow after holiness. Over in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, the Bible says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You know, you you ever think about stuff like that? If you don't have holiness in your life, it says, without which no man will see the Lord. There's a fine line there between being saved and not being saved, I believe. You know, if you're saved, my Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I know one thing, when I grew up in church, I mean, I had everything I needed to know about Jesus up here. But glory, hallelujah, man, that wasn't going to get me to heaven. I lived like the devil. I went out and partied with the best of them. And boy, I tell you what, whenever I met the Savior, whenever I met the Lord Jesus Christ, He come down in my heart and honey, He made a change down deep in my soul. And I ain't never been the same since and I don't want to be the same. But I tell you, if you ain't never experienced that, well, you're a preacher, man, you're different. I ain't no different than nobody else, honey. When the Lord of glory comes down inside of your soul, it's going to make a difference and you're going to know it. Man, you ain't going to ask somebody, are you saved? Well, I think so or I hope so. Honey, my Bible says if you're saved, you can know so. And I don't want you to know I know so because I've got a witness inside of me and that's the Holy Ghost of God bearing witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. And if you're saved, you've got the same bearing witness going on inside of you. Oh, Job, man, he was a man that was upright in heart and I want to be pleasing to God for everything I do. I don't know if I want God to talk to the devil about me. Have you considered Brother Bill down there? I don't know if I want to do that one. But I'll tell you what, have you ever, how many of y'all have had a little bit of attack going on since our Harvest Festival? Anytime you have the moving of the Holy Spirit of God, it always follows with having an attack and a spiritual attack from the demons of hell. It never fails. I've been having all kind of fun. I just praise the Lord and go on, man. I mean, you can't, well, you, there ain't nothing you can do about it anyhow. I woke up, man, I tell you this morning, I felt like if I'd have had a cat, I'd have kicked it. <laughs> so praise the Lord, I didn't have a cat. But I didn't feel good, man. I woke up 5.30 in the morning. 
I said, man, I woke up and started praying a little bit, and I said, okay, I just, I, I got to get up. So I got up and fixed me some coffee, got me a bowl of cereal. I ate it, I drank that coffee, and I still felt like kicking a cat. Yeah. <laughs> it's been like that all day almost. But praise the Lord, I, my wife called me up and she even jumped on me. She says, you don't need to talk so mean to me. I said, I'm not. I didn't think I was, but maybe I was. I don't know. Good thing she wasn't a cat. <laughs> I hope she ain't listening. <laughs> you ladies better be quiet. I told her I was sorry, though, if I talked like that, but I didn't mean to. But, you know, the Bible, it tells us there in Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men. We need to live peaceably, if we can, with all men. Follow peace, and it says, and holiness. And then it says, without which no man shall see the Lord. See, the Bible says in Romans 5, 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're saved, you've got the peace of God inside of you. So we need to follow peace, but then we also need to follow that holiness, for without which no man will see the Lord. That's peace and holiness. And the only way you're going to get peace is get saved, and the only way you're going to have holiness in your life is to be saved and follow the Lord. Amen. Job also, there in Job chapter 1, verse 20 and through 22, it says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. the Lord. Now this after all of his kids got killed and everything happened, man. He lost everything he had. And it, and it says in verse 22, In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. We need to have a prayerful humility about us. We know... I, I like that song, the inspiration sing. It says, don't worry about tomorrow. God's already there. Man, I, God's got this. Every time everything, something starts to happen around here, I said, don't worry. God's got it. And he does. My God has never, ever let me down since I've been saved. And you can probably say the same thing. Humility is the mark of greatness in a Christian's life. James 4.10, it says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. See, we need some lifting up sometimes, don't we? The best way to be lifted up is to get down. When you get down, that's like uh, John there on the Isle of Patmos. He was on the Lord's Day. The Bible says he was just you know, worshiping the Lord, and he heard some, a sound behind him. And when he turned, he saw the Lord. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet as dead man. And the Lord reached down and touched him and picked him up. See, whenever you get down, God's the one that's going to get you up. You don't want to exalt yourself above measure. We also need a preserving habit. The Bible says in Job 1.5, it says, thus did Job continually. See, we need to be continually studying our Bible. We need to be continually praying to our God. Job was not a fair-weather Christian, so to speak. No matter what happened in his life, he did everything continually. Don't ever let the devil disrupt your schedule with God. I mean, you ought to have a time you pray every day. You ought to have a time you read your Bible every day. 
You ought to have a time, any chance you get to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, pass out tracts, whatever it is, or just praise His holy name for His goodness. When's the last time you had you a spell? Boy, I tell you, every time I think about what God's done for me, I have me a time, man. I time be driving along, I got to pull off side of the road. Hallelujah. And then while you're driving, you have some idiot pull out in front of you while you're trying to praise the Lord. I don't know why that always happens. I think the devil does that. I'm pretty sure he does because here you are giving God the glory and some idiot pulls out in front of you. I had me an experience this morning. I was going to get a little bit of gas there at BJ's in my truck, my, my new truck. And I was going down that road in back of... Uh, that goes to BJ's back there, some back of Lowe's and all that there. And it's, no, it's not any lines or nothing, and it's a big wide road. And we were going, I was heading toward BJ's, and there was a car in front of me. And this car went all the way over to the edge, and there's a road right there where they're going to turn. They started to turn into that road, so I just pulled out there and started going around them. And about that time, that car, instead of turning this way, turned all the way across that big wide road, that road as wide as this church is, and pulled in them little, that little strip mall right there. I just said, praise the Lord, because we didn't hit. Amen. That was close. But I just kept praising the Lord. I was praying and asking God to just watch over everything. I already asked him to give me safety. I always do that before I take off. And his hand was right there. He took that white car and just pushed it right over. Took my truck and just went. I said, hallelujah. There is a God in heaven. And he took care of it. See, don't worry about tomorrow. God's already there. But you start thinking about Job. What do, what do you hear most? What do you remember hearing about Job? About the patience of Job? We need to have a patient hope about us. It says in James chapter 5 and verse 11, it says, Ye have heard of the patience of Job. James chapter 5 and verse 11. It said, he said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him in Job 13, 15. Was Job's attitude under intense trial? I believe so. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know if I can handle what he did. But I know that God's grace is sufficient, that God will get us through anything that we're going through. I mean, you start thinking about that. God's able. We're to live in this life looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Titus chapter 2 and verse 4. 13. Hope sustains. Hope is the anchor of the soul, both steadfast and sure. I don't know about you, but I got a hope tonight. And my hope ain't in this church. My hope is not in anything that we do. My hope is in one person, and his name is Jesus. Amen. And one day, he told me, and he's never, ever lie, and he cannot lie. He said, if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. I got a hope of knowing that one day, one day, and I believe that day is real soon, he's going to come back for his church. And I praise God for that. Do you have a hope tonight? Man, if you don't have one, I guarantee if you come on down to this old-fashioned altar down here, God can give you one if you ask Him. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. So praise the Lord. Let's all stand to our feet.